So, brainwave powered iOS apps. Click. Okay. So when I say brainwave controlled, people were thinking like, can it read my mind? Is it like extrapolating exactly what I'm thinking? Not quite. What we can read are emotional states. What we understand about the mind through the last century of neuroscience has been that the mind works at these different levels of emotional states. You have these different brainwave bands, things known as delta, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma. And so in the past, you had to use a complete bucket full of sensors all over your head in order to read these brainwave states. And so what NeuroSky has done is to take that medical device technology and turn it into consumer device technology. What was previously a bucket full of sensors is now a single sensor on your forehead. So what we can do is we can add a creative element of intrigue to your game. A game that understands certain emotional parts about you. We're not a replacement for the button, but what we can do is add that emotional layer. So we can monitor these, uh, that information in the background to create apps that know a little bit more about the user. Right now, there are developers who have worked in the ADHD space and the research space and are using those to create serious games that will provide benefits for the user. So with that information, we can create apps that involve the player in new levels of interactivity. And so there's kind of a complex process to this. I mean, it is, after all, neuroscience. Basically, there's a chip, and then from that chip, we read your brainwave signal. There's a series of complex algorithms, and then there's an application. What we want to do is to properly enable application development. And so where in the past we had uh, like complex sensors, what we're outputting are things that neuroscientists and game developers can utilize, besides raw waves, brainwave bands, and <clears throat> other things that neuroscientists would find useful. We have an attention meter and a meditation meter. So basically, if you can read a number from zero to 100, you know how attentive somebody is or how calm somebody is. And so that can be used to monitor in the background a person's level of interest. In addition to that, we can also monitor eye blinks and the signal status. So basically, from that, there are two waves of applying brain waves. There are voluntary applications and involuntary applications. From voluntary, you can find out like directly how somebody is involved in something. This will be a demo of voluntary brain waves. You could use it for like magic or telekinesis. But for involuntary, you might be involving the player into different gameplay patterns or making them watch certain uh, movies. So then that means in the background you can monitor those changes in brainwaves and create changes in the game path for them. So basically to sum all of this up is the thing that we are offering to game development is distinction. When you develop a game that uses brainwaves that takes advantage of this technology, your game will stand out from the crowd. So let's take a look at the Mattel MindFlex. Yeah, of course. I just got to say really quickly here, this, this, this game depends on, on being able to focus. And right now I can barely focus on the <laughs> sentence I'm saying. But uh, so Tansy's about to completely kill me. But so the, the, the rules, of the, it's basically like what? It's like a tug of war and we're going to try and push the ball. Like if you win when you push the ball all the way over my side, which is going to happen pretty quickly too. All right, it's neck and neck. Slowly now. This is what we do in our office all the time, so we get a lot of practice time. It makes a great drinking game. But uh, I also wanted to use this chance to bring up another like sub-project of this. We understand that you know it is a very interesting and different technology. One of the things that we had wanted to work on is assistive technology. There are people like um, patients with locked-in syndrome. Locked-in syndrome is this um, where you cannot fully interact with others. Oh. Ah. 
<laughs> so like locked in syndrome is like when you are trapped in yourself. And so one of the things that we wanted to do through our technology is to create a, a way to help developers create programs for people with locked in syndrome. So we actually created an Indiegogo site specific to creating these assistive technology programs where we would collect money for people that are interested in helping and then use that money to pay developers to create these assistive technology programs. Thanks very much.